Hey everybody, Brian here. Welcome to my lab. I'm very excited about today's video. Today we're going to count down the top 10 crested gecko morphs. I put this list together based mostly on how popular the morphs are, how much influence they've had in the gecko world, and uh, just how visually appealing they are, how attractive they are. Before we get into the list though, I want to remind you all, please visit our website at www.altitudeexotics.com. We have a lot of great animals for sale. We're constantly updating the website. There's always great stuff for sale. Also, please visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash aegeckos. I'm always posting updates of different projects, pictures, news, and we do a lot of auctions on our Facebook page. Without further ado, I'm very excited. Let's go ahead and get into the list. Alright, first up here at number 10, we have the pinstripe. The pinstripe really was the first morph that really got people excited about crested geckos, way back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Now, the pinstripe morph is defined by the row of raised scales running down the back, two rows of raised scales running down the back of the gecko there. You can see that defines the pinstripe morph. Another one on this guy, you can see those raised scales. All crested geckos have the spikes coming off their head. Pinstripes, the spikes continue all the way down their back. There's different levels of pinstripes. A partial pinstripe has certain breaks in the scales. You can see a couple here. A full pinstripe would have complete rows of scales all the way down the back. And this is another one of my favorites. This is one of our breeder females. She's just absolutely gorgeous example of a really high-end pinstripe. Full cream back, solid cream back, solid cream sides very beautiful animal. These make great, great display animals. Uh, next up, this is some people call these super stripes or empty back pin stripes. You can see the ray spikes all the way down the side along with the two rows of cream markings and the empty dorsal along with the lateral pinning. Another empty back pin stripe that we hatched out a couple years ago. This one is actually full grown, a breeding female here now. One of my favorite animals. This is one of my favorite that we've ever produced. And this is my personally my favorite pinstripe variation is the quad stripe as you can see the lateral pinning here the solid stripe down the side that's what makes it a quad stripe I just think they're absolutely stunning they're very clean very sleek looking very beautiful animals that's the pinstripe morph number 10 on our countdown All right, next up at number nine on the list, we have the creamsicle. Creamsicle more refers to a color combination than a physical trait. Creamsicles are, as you can see, orange and white, or orange and cream. This guy's a creamsicle pinstripe. You can see he's got the gorgeous bright orange color on the sides, the solid cream dorsal. The contrast between the orange and the cream on these geckos is absolutely stunning. They are visually some of the most appealing animals out there. They're not nearly as common as a lot of the other morphs. I'm not really sure why. They're pretty popular, but you don't see nearly as many of these as you will a lot of the other morphs on the list. This girl here, some people get really picky about creamsicles. I'm not nearly as picky. I would consider this a creamsicle. She's a little more yellow than orange. Still that nice cream white back. Very gorgeous animal. The next one up here, this photo comes to us courtesy of Crestopia Reptiles. Sam over at Crestopia has some stunning animals. This is one of my favorite creamsicles I've ever seen. Beautiful, gorgeous white lats, solid lats, orange coloration. That dorsal just kills me. That beautiful cream dorsal is amazing. This is one of my favorite animals. And lastly here we have a more basic example of this morph. This is a flame creamsicle. You can see the cream flame pattern down the back. Not much going on the sides, but still that gorgeous orange to cream contrast. A great addition to any collection, the creamsicle. Alright, here we go at number 8. We have Tricolor and Extreme Harlequins. Now your standard Harlequin, like this girl here, was one of the first morphs people started working with, along with pinstripes. We're going to go ahead and skip right past that to the Extreme Harlequin. Extreme Harleys have side pattern that covers the majority of their sides. Lots of pattern reaching almost up to the dorsal, or sometimes all the way to the dorsal. The Extreme Harlequin is obviously just a more extreme version of the Harley, and it makes them more visually appealing. 
some like this one, not quite as much pattern coverage, but still a lot of coverage, very high contrast. This is an extreme Harlequin pinstripe. As you can see, it still has the pinstripe scales as well. Now this guy here is one of my favorite Harlequins that I personally own. As you can see, his pattern covers almost his entire body. There's barely any base color visible. There's a few of these out there right now. They're getting more and more prevalent and more and more popular. This version of the Extreme Harlequin is by far the most sought after right now, and obviously so, they are stunning. This is another example of a high pattern Extreme Harlequin, almost completely covered in pattern, gorgeous animals. It's about as close as we can get right now to a solid white crested gecko. Now this photo comes to us courtesy of Barb over at Creepy Exotics. Barb is well known for her tricolor Harlequins and she has some of the best in the industry. A tricolor has three distinct colors. As you can see, the dark base color underneath, the orange Harlequin markings over that, and then some white markings over the orange Harlequin markings. The contrast between the three separate colors makes these geckos absolutely gorgeous. They are easily some of the most sought after in the industry right now. Very popular. They're still fairly rare. They're kind of hard to get a hold of, but there's a handful of breeders that are working with really, really high-end lines, and I just can't wait to see where these go in the next couple years with further breeding and how much nicer they can get. At number seven we have the Dalmatian. Now Dalmatians are named just like the dog after the black spots they get all over them. Dalmatians come in a number of base colors, basically anything you can think of. Red, yellow, orange, brown, gray, black. Any color you can get a gecko in, you can get a Dalmatian version. Now a basic Dalmatian just has a few spots like this. This is a co-dominant morph. There's a bit of a misconception that to be a super Dalmatian, a gecko has to have a certain number of spots, 50 spots or 100 spots. That's completely false. It's a co-dominant morph, so a super Dalmatian is just the super form of the Dalmatian gene. This is a normal Dalmatian here, as you can see, there's a few spots around. The super Dalmatian, as this girl is here, has a lot more spots than a normal Dalmatian. Spots can also vary in color. There's both black and red spots. This guy is one of my favorite breeders. As you can see, he's covered almost completely in red spots. This photo comes to us from Crestopia Reptiles. This is one of Sam's red spot geckos, an absolutely perfect specimen. Huge red spots all over the gecko. Just a stunning, stunning animal. Now spots can also vary in size. The larger spots like this girl has we refer to as ink spot Dalmatians. This boy is one of our best ink spot breeders. His name is Duma. As you can see just a ton of black spots. Very light base. Absolutely great gecko. He's produced some of our best best super Dalmatian offspring. Now this girl's name is Marilyn. She is absolutely my favorite super Dalmatian that we own. She is covered in giant black spots. She has that gorgeous light colored base. She is beautiful. Everybody likes something different. That's the great thing about crested geckos. There's so many different options. But as far as super Dalmatians go, this is absolutely my favorite. Here at number six we have what I call the charcoal morph. Now quick note on these. Charcoal is my name for my personal line of what is a basically a patternless solid black or very dark brown gecko. There's a couple different breeders that have very similar looking geckos that don't call them charcoals, it's different bloodlines. I kind of included them all into the same morph, but I'm just using my name because that's what I call mine. This guy here is the founding animal that I started this line with. As you can see, he's very dark. They're just basically completely patternless, almost solid black animals. Now this girl is one of our breeding females. She's on the white background here, so she's a little easier to see. This gives you a great idea of the color potential on these guys. They get extremely dark. They're not quite a true black. They're very, very, very dark brown, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Very simple, very beautiful. As you can see, some of them have the race pinstripe scales. They don't all have that, but some of them do. Now this guy is one that we actually recently sold. He is so dark that he almost blends into his picture. You almost can't see him against a black background. He is a great example of one of the best that we've produced so far. Now the charcoal line, our line, I have proven out to be a co-dominant morph. 
I don't yet know if there's a super form to this morph. We'll find out this upcoming season in 2017. Hopefully we will find out if there's a super form, but the charcoal line, our line, is a co-dominant morph. Now this is a bit of a funny picture. This girl, another one of our breeding females, she was in her cage with half of her body covered by her hide and half of her body exposed. This is a great picture to give you an idea of the contrast. Fired down, they're this color down here, kind of a light gray, light tannish color, and then she's starting to fire up on the top half. You can see how dark they get. Just a really neat picture to give you an idea of fired up versus fired down all in one gecko. Now this one here, this photo comes to us again from Barb over at Creepy Exotics. This is not a charcoal line gecko. I don't know if this is genetically the same as the line that I'm working with, but I wanted to include it because this is one of my absolute favorite geckos in the world right here. Barb is doing great work with these patternless black geckos. As you can see, he's got some white portholes, beautiful white fringing on the back legs, completely dark, absolutely gorgeous animal. Barb's doing amazing things with these. Check her out at Creepy Exotics and see a lot more of these beautiful animals she's working with. Coming in at number five, we have the red harlequin. This is a basic red harlequin, as you can see here. Gorgeous red base color, some pattern on the sides. Really, really nice animal. Red extreme harlequins take it to the next level. This girl takes it up another notch. She's a red extreme harlequin. As you can see, a lot more pattern coverage. Still that great red base color. Great structure as always. Red Extreme Harleys are one of my favorite morphs that we have. This is another Red Extreme Harley. I absolutely love this girl. She has some of the best color of any red in my collection. Almost complete pattern coverage. Great color. She's very bright. She produces some of our best offspring. Now this girl doesn't have the pattern coverage of the last two, but color-wise, she's absolutely top-notch. This is what I refer to as Neon Red Harlequins. Her red color is absolutely some of the brightest. That neon red color is beautiful, it's bright, when they're completely fired up, they are absolutely stunning. I think it's visually some of the best geckos out there. Now I'm going to keep that red thing going into number four, we have the red pinstripe. Red pinstripes, for a long time for me, were the pinnacle of crested geckos. They're still one of the most sought after. They're not as rare as they used to be, but they're still one of the most sought after, and I think, visually, one of the most striking morphs we have. They're just like a regular pinstripe we looked at earlier, with the raised scales going all the way down the back. The only difference is they have a red base color. This boy is one of my breeders for a couple years now. He was one of the first really bright neon red pinstripes that I produced. He has great structure. I love that really long crest length, the long spikes all the way down his back wide on the sides, absolutely gorgeous. This is one of my favorite examples of a red pinstripe. Now this girl ups the ante a little bit as we had pinstripes and quad stripes. Now we have red pinstripes and red quad stripes. Just like before, just like a regular pinstripe. All those beautiful spike scales all the way down the back and you add in the lateral striping here. Now these two girls are two of my most popular animals in our entire collection. As you can see, tons of cream on the side solid cream dorsals. I'm a huge fan of that solid one color cream dorsal and the contrast between the white cream and the neon red is absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite breeding projects hands down. Moving on to number three, we have what is referred to as the drippy dorsal or white spot morph. Now this one's a little bit weird because there really isn't one commonly agreed on name for this morph. People tend to call it different things, but the most common thing you'll hear is drippy dorsal, or when somebody refers to a drippy gecko. Now what they're talking about is the small row of white spots. Generally, the most common place you'll see them is right here along the dorsal, just underneath the pinstripe scales, a small line of white spots. You can also get them on the sides, and as you see on this boy, on the back legs. Now drippy dorsals can come in any base color imaginable. As you can see on this boy, he's a lavender, that real nice light lavender gray base color. And they get the name drippy dorsal from, if, imagine if you were to paint the back of this gecko, the solid dorsal, and the paint kind of dripped down onto his sides. That's where people came up with the name. As you can see those small white spots all the way down the sides, he's also got them on the back legs. A great example here. This picture comes to us courtesy of Amanda McCarn. 
This is one of my favorite animals. This one's named Envy. She's got an absolutely beautiful collection of these. And this one's one of my favorites. Big spots along the dorsal, really big spots on the sides, white spots all over the back legs. A prime example of this morph right here. One last example, I actually got this girl a long time ago, back in 2009, before anybody had really recognized what this trait was, I had this girl. As you can see, she's got the drips right along her dorsal here. And I had her for a while before we really started to recognize what this trait was, how special it was, and how beautiful these were when you bred and improved on this morph. Marking our number two spot is one of the most exciting morphs to come out in Crested Geckos ever. This is the Lily White. Now a quick disclaimer, all of my pictures for this section came to us courtesy of Lily Exotics. Lily Exotics is the breeder that started this morph. They're the first ones that identified it and every Lily White, as far as I know of, comes from their bloodlines. Now what the Lily Whites are, it is a proven co-dominant morph. And what it does, the expression of this morph is very high amounts of cream all over this gecko. This is a beautiful example. As you can see, they have that drippy dorsal pattern, very thick cream there, very thick bright white cream on the sides, very white cream on the dorsal, an almost patternless tail. This is a great example. That lily white morph just seems to layer all of that cream color all over all the geckos. Now you can breed these to different colors and get different base color lily whites as well. Red, oranges, you can get Dalmatian spots on them. They're very versatile, but they are all absolutely gorgeous. This photo gives you a good idea of the contrast these get. These ones fire up a little bit darker, as you can see, dark base color, and just that real thick white cream all over them. These things are just stunning, stunning animals. Now these are still pretty rare. Lily Exotics just started releasing these about a year ago now, and uh, not too many people are working with them yet. They're going to get more common because of how popular they are. Everybody wants one of these, including me. I haven't gotten one for myself yet. But they are going to be some of the most sought after geckos for a long, long time to come. Now, as I said before, the Lily White is a proven co-dominant morph. Now, the super form of that morph is leucistic, completely pigmentless geckos. Now, unfortunately, the super form with this trait is non-viable. They don't survive. They don't even live long enough or grow to be strong enough to hatch on their own. They have to be cut out of the egg. It's very unfortunate because a completely pigmentless crested gecko would be absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, it's a fatal gene. That's not uncommon in reptiles if anybody's ever bred carpet pythons. The super form of the jaguar morph is also a fatal leucistic. It's something that happens. It doesn't affect the lily whites whatsoever. And because they're co-dominant, you can breed them to anything else. It's just if you breed two of them together, half of your offspring are going to have the super form of this trait, which unfortunately is fatal. Now, we finally arrived at the number one spot. This is my pick for my favorite crested gecko morph, the Azanthic. Now, what Azanthic is, is these guys have a mutation that prevents them from producing yellow pigment, very similar to how an albino animal has a mutation that prevents them from, from producing melanin or dark pigment. These guys cannot produce yellow pigment. Now, the result of that is, as you can see, completely monochrome colored animals. They're totally black and white. They have no color at all. Now the Azanthic morph was founded by a wonderful woman named Catherine who lives over in London. Catherine was a hobbyist breeder who had just a few breeding pairs of geckos. One of those pairs produced the first Azanthic gecko. She kept that pair together and hatched a handful of these guys and eventually she realized that this project was way bigger than she was going to be able to handle. They needed a lot more outcrossing, a lot more diversity in their bloodlines, and it just wasn't something she could really bring to its full potential. I was very, very fortunate enough to become pretty good friends with Catherine, and we worked out a deal that I bought the entire bloodline, the entire project from her. This is one of the male breeders that I originally got from Catherine. Here he's fired down, as you can see how light gray they get. The Azanthics come in a couple different colors, all of them ranging in that monochrome scale. Some of them are almost pure white, and they get all the way up to almost solid black. Here's another great example of a breeding male that we got from Catherine. This guy's fired up. 
Again, to give you an idea of their color range, he's much darker gray. I absolutely love this picture. This was actually the first picture I took of one of these when I got the first shipment in from Catherine. I was floored the first time I saw one of these in person. They look absolutely fake. Even in real life, they look fake. They're just so stunning, so beautiful. I'm incredibly lucky to be able to work with these animals. This girl is one of my absolute favorites. She is the lightest azanthic that we have. This is her fired down, however she doesn't really fire up. She never gets much darker than a light gray. Fired down, however, she's pure white and she is absolutely stunning. Well there we have it. That is my list for the top 10 crusted gecko morphs. As you can see, there's so much variety with these animals. That's what makes them so popular, and that's what makes them so much fun to breed. Everybody has different tastes, and everybody likes different things, and with crested geckos, there's definitely something for everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in to watch. I really appreciate it. Do me a favor, and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite morph is. This list is obviously my choices. I want to know what you guys like. What's your favorite morph? Tell me in the comments down below. Also, if you have any questions about crested geckos, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try and answer them for you guys. Anything you want to know, any questions you have, or any questions for me, feel free to leave them down below and I'll try and get back to each and every one of you. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot more videos coming in the future. 